they've suddenly found their energy. Excellent play by Derry, but there was little or no option for Mike Murphy except to go for it. And Derry are backtracking, but Paul Thomas is yes. Derry are the Ulster champions for the first time since 1998. Rory Gallagher, former Donegal manager, has guided his county, his adopted county, to their title, their first was won in 1958, 70, 75, 76, 87, 93, and 1998, and now in 2022. A wonderful, wonderful day for Derry football. Derry, Derry, Derry. Home of the River Foyle, Martin O'Neill, Joe Brawley, and the 1993 All Ireland Senior Football Champions. It's a county that has lots of history, tradition, and often trouble, which plighted Derry GEA in the early 1900s, right up until the end of the Troubles in 1998. That being said, it didn't stop the county from achieving some special moments in Gaelic football. A first Ulster title in 1958, followed by a first All-Ireland final appearance, which they lost to Dublin. They won four more Ulster titles before their sixth in 1993, a year Derry fans will always remember as they won their first and only ever All-Ireland title, beating down Monaghan, Donegal, Dublin and Cork in the process. 1998 added another Ulster title and 2000 a National League title. However, apart from that, Derry's demise was significant with just a National League crown in 2008 and just two Ulster final appearances in the 23 years between 1998 and 2022. In fairness to Derry though, it's not like they have always been a huge powerhouse or have a massive history of contending major honours. They have produced some of the province's top players but they pale in comparison to some of its rivals, with usually just being a flash in the pan type of team. However, in 2018, when the county had been relegated to Division 4 of the National Football League, alarm bells were raised throughout the county, with Derry football perhaps in the worst state it had ever been. In fact, before the start of the 2022 Ulster Senior Football Championship, Derry hadn't won a game in the province since 2015. That's quite incredible when you think about how well Derry played in 2022, but they hadn't even won a game in the Ulster Championship since 2015. Quite remarkable. They did play Armagh, Donegal and Tyrone all within that seven year period, so the reality probably wasn't as bad as it had sounded, but Derry's record in Ulster since 2012 was one win in 11 games with 10 defeats. And it wasn't like the county did much in the qualifiers either. Defeats to the likes of Longford, twice as a matter of fact, Tipperary and Leash all occurred in the qualifiers during that time period. It's what makes the 2022 Ulster senior football success of Derry with manager Rory Gallagher one of the great achievements in Gaelic football in modern times as the county won a first Ulster title in 24 years and put themselves on the map as all Ireland contenders. And of course it didn't happen overnight. Years of work and schools at underage level, growth of communities and clubs and bringing a togetherness of Derry football that hadn't been there since the 1990s. And you see, it's not like Derry hadn't got quality footballers in the county, because they clearly had. Of Derry's starting 15 versus Donegal in the 2022 Ulster Final, seven of them started at Owenbeg versus Leash in a 2019 Round 2 qualifier defeat. Shane McGuigan, Chrissy McCaig, Brendan Rogers, Benny Heron, Podrick Cassidy, all some of those who started, with Connor Doherty even coming off the bench. Considering it was more or less the same squad in 2022, with some notable additions of course, it makes the rise even that bit sweeter for Derry fans. But the question then remains, why were they failing so badly in both league and championship? Three consecutive relegations led them to Division 4 by 2019 and things looked pretty bleak for the Oakleaf County. Well, during the time of Derry's relegations through the tiers of the National Football League, there was a lot of success and emphasis on both club football and hurling in Derry during that time period. Shane McGuigan, Brendan Rogers, and Chrissy McCaig were in and out of the Derry team for much of 2014 up until now due to club commitments with Slot Neal. Slot Neal have won 14 county titles in both football and hurling since 2014, along with seven Ulster titles in both football and hurling. Slot Neal were very, very dominant at that period of time in both Ulster club football and club hurling as well. And certainly with the likes of Brendan Rogers, Chrissy McKay, and Shane McGuigan having been playing for Slot Neal, this certainly did take up much of their focus and they were very much in and out of the Derry side at that moment in time and were missing at the start of a lot of the National Football League campaigns. With the fact there was no split season up until this year, all Ireland's would run into March with the three players we mentioned all tied up with Slot Neil. 
Integrating them back into the team towards the end of the league was always a tricky task and that was even if they were fit and available, which a lot of the time they weren't as well. And club rivalries in Derry has often been labelled as a reason for the potential downfall of Derry pre Rory Gallagher. With Slot Neil, you also had Wally Graham's Glenn, who had the likes of Kira McFell, Emmett Bradley, Ethan Doherty, and now Connor Glass, of course. The heated battles at club level create a divide within the county, something similar to actually what's happening in County Down as of right now. And this was something even Shane McGuigan admitted when speaking on the GEA or podcast in 2021 saying quote, Maybe in the past it's something that has maybe crept in. Rory did come in though and he did demand that we need to be more as one. We need to be living and breeding with each other and we have to be committed to each other better. And the appointment of Rory Gallagher as manager in late 2019 was one of the first key turning points in the success of bringing Ulster back to Derry. Rory Gallagher seeing the need to bring Derry closer together and for everyone to be pulling in the same direction, leaving club rivalries aside once the players were with the county. Now in fairness I don't think this was the primero factor in Derry's re-rise and to be fair to Shane McGuigan he did even also say that the club hatred amongst clubs in Derry has often been over exaggerated. But Rory's first task was to bring unity and togetherness in the Derry footballing team something that very much hadn't been there in previous seasons and whilst a lot of players didn't want to admit that there had been some rumblings between various different clubs in Derry it was evident to see when you look at Derry's fall through the National Football League the fact that a lot of players were making themselves unavailable there was injuries a lot of the time in the panel and there just seemed to be a lot of issues behind the scenes with Derry GEA but when Rory Gallagher came in his first task was to bring everyone together and have everyone pulling in the same direction. The Fermanagh native who also spent a short period of time playing for Cavan played a key role in the success of Donegal in 2012 winning both the Ulster and all Ireland Senior Football Championship serving as a selector to Jim McGuinness. Gallagher had a disappointing spell himself as manager of Donegal in 2014, but he did have joy in his management spell at Fermanagh, leading the county to just the county's second ever Ulster final in 2018. Known for setting up his teams in a defensive system with fast runners on the counter-attack, Rory Gallagher has often been at the epicentre for criticism, with Carmo Rourke and some other Sunday game pundits quick to call him out on it. It involves getting every man behind the ball in a zonal defensive system and then breaking with pace on the attack in a high intensity running game. However, Gallagher did often show his tactical flexibility with mixing it up on different occasions with Derry, kicking long when needed and switching up the game plan depending on which opposition they were facing. And he's certainly a character on the sideline, which is why I've often been a very big fan. The energy, enthusiasm and passion on the sideline is a joy to watch and it's very often reflected in how his teams play. And the return of Connor Glass has also been critical to the success of this Derry team and it's no coincidence when you look at the success of Waddy Graham's Glen and the success of Derry since Con Connor Glass has come back into the team, you can very much see how influential he has been upon his return to both club and county. An all-starring Rolls-Royce of a midfielder who brings his athleticism from the AFL as well as his brilliant skill in dictating football matches with his control of the midfield area. He also has shown he's not bad in terms of scoring ability as well now in fairness. And in fairness to Derry, even during their time of their demise, things actually weren't too bad at underage level. In fact, Derry had actually seen a lot of success at underage level whilst their senior team had been failing. Three Ulster Football Championships and an All-Ireland at minor level have shown that Derry have had good and exciting players coming through down the years and certainly if Derry could integrate these players into the senior team, there were hopes that maybe there was something starting to brew for Derry football. And when Rory Gallagher did take charge in his first two seasons in 2020 and 2021, there were difficult years for Derry GEA and well, for the entirety of the GEA community with the fact that COVID caused massive disruption, it meant there was no qualifiers and with the fact that Derry were in probably the toughest province there is in Gaelic games, it was always gonna be very tough for them to build up a winning run. In 2020, they played Armagh in the opening game. In 2021, they played Donegal. They lost both games by the smallest of margins and there was no qualifiers in them seasons. So if Derry maybe did have qualifiers, who knows? Maybe they would have went on a run, got into a quarter final, got into the final round of the qualifiers. You just don't know. But Derry's 
form in 2020 and 2021 whilst it wasn't great in the championship there certainly was more to that statistic than them just being poor shall we say there certainly was more to the statistic than them finishing both of them two seasons winless in the championship because as we said there were no qualifiers and had there been qualifiers maybe they would have done a lot better than they did in those two years. And there was clear signs of progression in 2021 though with the National Football League as they gained promotion to Division 2 in 2021, winning all their games very convincingly. And their league form in 2022 showed that Derry were ready to mix with the big boys with just a single defeat to Galway holding their promotion to Division 1. But Derry looked very, very good in the league. They mixed it up with a lot of the big teams and show that they're going to be a tough team to beat coming in the Ulster Senior Football Championship in 2022. Connor Glass proving his worth to the team once again. Shane McGuigan establishing himself as one of the best inside forwards in the country on form. Brendan Rogers explosiveness from fullback in midfield. Derry swept away All-Ireland champions Tyrone in the opening round in the Ulster Senior Football Championship and proved to have too much for Monaghan in the semi-finals. Derry were back in the Ulster Senior Football Final. And in fairness to Derry, it wasn't just a full blanket that they played with. They went at teams and went for their throw and then sat in when needed to. It proved to be something highly effective. Rory Gallagher often getting criticism for setting his teams up overly defensively. And in fairness, when he was manager for Mana, he very much did so. But that was probably more so got to do with the players that he had at his disposal. But with Derry, he wasn't afraid to go at teams. In Clare in the all quarter quarterfinals, they blew them away. And even at times in the Ulster Championship, they went at teams. They didn't just sit back and sort of defend for the sake of it. There was a clear plan, clear structure, and a clear idea of how Rory Gallagher wanted to go about getting his teams to set up and win football matches. Against Donegal in the final, patience was required as well as belief as Donegal pushed Derry as close as they had been in the final but through the will, grit and determination, Derry pulled off a famous, famous win. Gallagher's decision to have Rogers pick up Murphy proved to be a masterstroke as even one of Donegal's best ever footballers couldn't keep up with the pace of Mr. Brendan Rogers. And with Derry being the Ulster Senior Football Champions for the first time in 24 years, the question was now, could Derry go even one better and land the first All-Ireland Senior Football Championship since 1993? And the answer, unfortunately, for Derry fans was no. They did hammer Clare in the quarterfinals, as we mentioned previously, but they did fall short to Galway in the semi-finals, a game they never really look like winning, if we be perfectly honest. But there are plenty of positives now for Derry going into 2023. A now settled team and another year for Rory Gallagher to work and develop these players even further. Derry could be a serious prospect going into 2023 and you certainly can't rule them out of winning an Ulster title and again possibly putting up another fight for an All-Ireland. Gallagher has cemented himself as one of the best coaches in Gaelic football at the minute and I have no doubt he will not settle on what he has achieved this year. Could Derry win an All-Ireland in 2023? It looks unlikely, but with Gallagher and this team at the helm, it's not impossible. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what did you think of Derry's success this year winning their first Ulster Senior Football Championship in 24 years. How do you think they'll get on next year in the Ulster Championship and the All-Ireland? I think it's going to be tough for them to be honest. I think a lot more teams are going to be aware of what Derry are going to bring to the table. You know, I think the likes of Tyrone and Monaghan were very much caught last year, whereas next year I feel like, you know, Donegal and these type of teams will be a lot more aware of what Derry bring to the table. But I think when you look at the quality of Rory Gallagher and what he's brought to this Derry side and you look at the quality in that team, you certainly can't discount them. And if I was a Derry fan, I'd be very, very excited for next season. Donegal, when they won their Ulster title back in 2011, their first Ulster title in some time, Rory Gallagher was part of that backroom team. A year later, with Jim McGuinness, they won the All-Ireland for the first time in 20 years. Could Derry do similar next year, win their first All-Ireland in 30 years? I don't think so, but I'd be curious to know your opinions, your comments down below. My name is Aaron. Smash the like button, subscribe to GEA Fan TV for more content. I'll see you all later.